Hey everybody, Adam here for True North Wilds. This is the October unboxing of the Mystery Tackle Box Elite Bass Box. A little bit late in the month. Sometimes I get them later, sometimes I get them earlier. I don't have any control over it. I just open them when I get them. So it's a Halloween opening, I guess. Uh, if you watched my last video, you know that I had a pretty disappointing experience with the Pro Edition that I get for October. Uh, so I'll be paying particular attention to the what's in the box card on this and the prices and see if I have the same issues with this box. Typically I don't. Typically this Elite box tends to be better. So I'm going to hope that that continues. While I'm opening this up, don't forget you can follow us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash TrueNorthWilds on Instagram at TrueNorthWilds and of course our blog site TrueNorthWilds.com. So the first thing I want to grab is going to be the what's in the box card. I don't normally pay too much attention to these, but now I realize that I probably should be, so let's set that right there and grab this. So this is the Great Lakes Agitator, a mystery tackle box exclusive, which usually means the color. Uh, it's, so it's kind of a neat color. It's kind of the same general pat color pattern as the Lucky John Shad that I got in the Pro Box that was a MTB exclusive. So it's a nice color pattern. It's a lipless crankbait and it's got a pretty heavy rattle in there and I can see the ball bearings. Pretty aggressive rattle like a lot of lipless crankbaits do. It's got a nice shape on it. This is listed as $6.99 so that's reasonable. The color is nice. It's got a clear plastic base, but it's got just a hint of color over the over the clear plastic for most of the body. The stripes are darker, and then the head is this green color that is a little bit darker, but still see-through plastic. And then the bottom, instead of being a bright white on the bottom, it's this nice purple color, and I'm a sucker for purple. I like lipless crankbaits. They're really useful. I'll actually be able to use this for ice fishing. For walleye. That rattle in there, dropping it down, ripping it up through the uh, ice hole, be very effective. Also good for smallmouth bass in the open water, but I don't have any open water to fish until spring. So all in all, not too bad. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. The Yum Money Minnows, the ultimate soft plastic swim bait. So I've gotten a few packs of these over the last few months from various boxes. They have a coating on them, so they do have a scent. I don't I don't have this color. This color is hey. This color is Foxy Shad. So it's not the sexy shad, it's the foxy shad. I like it. Nice eyes on them, it's a nice thick plastic big chunky paddle tail. The pattern on this one is nice. It's the blue pattern on top with the yellow, the orange spot, white belly, nice gold eyes. Good beefy plastic and it's got that nice yum baits scent on it. They are listed as $9.59 so about 12 bucks Canadian which I believe is the same as what was listed in a different box that I got them that wasn't Mr. Taco Box. So that seems reasonable. Expensive plastics, but at least they are on par with uh, what the cost is. But they are nice plastics. They are, they are a good chunky plastic with that big chunky paddle tail actually makes a, a really nice swim action. Next up, the Booyah Baitco Toad Runner. So of course, you can't have a bass box without surface lures. Just doesn't work. Let's see if I can get into this. And of course, I don't have largemouth bass too close to me, so I don't do a lot of bass surface fishing. However, I like to surface fish for pike, and bass lures that work on the surface for bass are excellent for northern pike, which is my favorite fish to catch. Okay, so this is a cool surface frog. It's got shortened um, leg streamers here, and instead it's got this paddle tail 
attached on a swivel. So that's pretty neat. You'll get you'll get all kinds of grab onto it. You get all kinds of stuff going on with that. It's got a nice wire through the middle of it, so it's going to be pretty stiff. And it's gonna with that swivel, it's gonna splash all over the place as you're hopping this over the surface of the water. So you you can do a fairly steady retrieve and get the paddle tail swim action, or you can hop it and let this just flail around and splash all over the place. You're gonna make a lot of noise on the surface of the water. You're gonna attract a lot of attention. The color is really nice. Nice frog color, nice eyes on it, white belly. I like the short streamers because a lot of times I find them too long and I clip them off anyway. So all in all, pretty nice frog. Oh yeah, Toad Runner, $9.99, so that's appropriate. So that'll be interesting to use again. I won't be able to use this till spring. But I'm uh, definitely going to be looking forward. I'm getting quite the collection of frogs now, and I'm getting pretty excited to go in the spring and get some really big pike on them. I might have to, one of these days, make the trip to uh, try and get some largemouth bass as well, because it seems like it would be a lot of fun as well. Next up we have the Hedden Topwater Action, the uh, Zara Puppy. Zara Puppy. So Hedden is a good brand. They've been around a while. It's a good name brand. The Zara Puppy. Zara Zara. Just a clear plastic tube is basically what it looks like. But it does have has a ball bearing in there that I can see, but it doesn't move, so no rattle. That's just for weight. Uh, it's literally just clear plastic. That's interesting. It says, uh, yeah, bass, northern pike, musky, redfish, trout, and bluefish. Surface, so it floats. And it's meant for walk dog action twitching, zigzagging. I don't, I've never used a lure like that that is just, just plain clear plastic. It does have eyes on it. So, that'll be really, I don't really know what to say about that. I think that could work pretty good. I know head and lures tend to be pretty good. Um, so the quality is nice. Can't say anything about the color. There is none. So that'll be an interesting surface lure to try. This will be something that I can actually use. It's the appropriate size for a smallmouth bass. So smallmouth bass I really can't frog fish for. They don't come to the surface and inhale it so much like that. But lures of this style with the treble hooks hanging down um, that are more of a, a, hard, uh, a hard bait and smaller in size, uh, smallmouth bass will go after and, of course, pike. So... Springtime, that'll be fun to try out, and I'm really interested to see how that clear plastic works. That one was $6.99, so yeah. All the prices on here look pretty appropriate for for hard baits and uh, for what I'm getting. Okay, so this is Chase Baits Frill Seeker. The Frill Seeker from Chase Baits. I just recently got a Chase Baits lure. I've never actually used them yet. So this is only my second one that I've ever gotten. First one was pretty neat, and this one looks pretty cool too. It comes with an extra tail. I can see that right off the bat, which is nice. This is listed at $16.99, so this is the most expensive thing in here. And wow, this has a lot going on. I'm not sure where to hold it, because it is very wiggly, floppy. So it's got this jointed, segmented, ribbed plastic tail, which I'm actually a little afraid to tug too hard on. It looks very, very, there's very thin connections. I don't want to pull too hard. It looks like these will come off pretty easy. The body is a hard body, and it's all jointed. There's one, two, one, two, three, three segments. Very, very loose joints, spaced. There's a lot of space between them, so there's all kinds of movement. Huge range of movement. And then the head has these plastic streamers and a front uh, dive bill of some sort. I don't think it's a, 
actually going to dive. It doesn't doesn't say if it's going to dive, but it has this bill on the front. I imagine it's more for just uh, almost like a popper. It says work it on the surface, and it says add some paste to dive subsurface. It doesn't say a depth, but so I imagine it'll only go a foot or two with this vertical dive bill here will mostly just be for pushing against the water. The color is iguana and now that I actually look close uh, it has molded ripples on it on like scales like an iguana would have and it has these painted on um, front feet as if the iguana was swimming through the water and the back feet as well all pressed up against the body and that would be what the tail is also representing there. It's a very interesting lure it's a very cool lure. Nice flat bottom profile and a nice color pattern. The Frill Seeker 175 it says there. Uh, it's got a nice white. The top is this nice chartreuse sort of color with this painted on um, black and brown accents to make it look like the iguana. And then the head. The head is really detailed. It's got this frill I imagine is meant to be. I don't know what kind of iguana it's meant to be, but. Uh, Everything about this is really cool and has a lot of detail. And the head has the eyes painted on really nice. It's got these dots on the side of the face. It's got even the ear holes sort of painted on and the mouth and everything. It's a pretty cool lure. I don't know how effective this will be as a bait for me personally. Uh, for anything other than pike. I think pike will go after this. Um, definitely. I don't imagine I'll catch smallmouth on this. It's too big. Not really the right shape. I don't think I'll catch walleye. I can't think of anything nearby that I will fish for that I will catch on this other than northern pike. But I'm happy to fish for northern pike. And like I said, I, I'm getting to the point where I should really make a trip and fish for largemouth. I'm interested to see if largemouth would go after this. I don't know enough about fishing them to say. So if anybody has experience with something like this, uh, for sure let me know down in the comments there. All in all, it's a really cool lure. I don't have... It's pretty unique. I don't have anything quite like that. I'm, I'm excited to try that. That'll be a spring, uh, spring fishing trip for me. Plastics. A couple of plastics now to top it off. So we got the KVD, the Strike King, uh, perfect plastics. This is the rodent in Green Pumpkin. It's a pack of six and they are four inch. So four inch creature plastics listed at $5.99. It's not too bad for pack of pla big plastics like this, at least getting a full pack. Creature plastic. They smell like coffee. Coffee scent and salt. Nice, thick, beefy. Not a lot of stretch to them. They got the nice ribbed body. They got really detailed claws and these back claws here. So, nice creature plastic. Nice, neutral color. That olive green, brownish sort of with the black flex. Nice plastics all in all. Good for bass, good for pike. And, and a nice scent on them. I might even with that scent be able to attract a couple other varieties of fish. I'll have to experiment with that with that uh, coffee scent. It's not a popular scent around here so I think it might intrigue some fish. Usually around here it's going to be garlic or that spicy licorice or, or a shad scent. Coffee is something that I haven't used a whole lot of, and I think I'm actually pretty interested to try that. Last up, Sweet Spot Tackle. $3.99 for this package. And this is actually the same as what I got in the Pro Box. Is it? No, it's not. Okay. So in the Pro Box that I was unhappy with, I got Sweet Spot Plastics, a uh, slightly different shape than these ones, but it was only a pack of four for $3.99, so a dollar, at a dollar of plastic it really rubbed me the wrong way. This is actually a pack of eight for four bucks. This is more appropriate, so I'm actually not upset with this. This is more reasonably priced. This is what should have been in the Pro Box. So this is Sweet Spot Shooters, they're called. And they're just a leech sort of shape. They're very thin and thin profile sideways, 
pretty thin profile from the top and bottom, and then this long skinny tail with just a little bulge at the end. Flattened body, and they're sort of ribbed. They are meant to look like a leech. And they do a pretty good job of that. They're a really dark color. I'm not sure if it's really dark blue or it might just be black. Looks like it might just be black, but it has a lot of blue sparkle in it, which is really nice. So the color is really nice. Good profile. Plastic feels pretty decent. There is nothing for scent that I can tell. I don't think there's any scent on there. I'm a little bit stuffed up, so it's hard to tell. But all in all, that's a nice pack of plastics. That is reasonably priced. I would feel better about my other box if they would have been at least the quantity that I'm getting here. The one thing around here is these... I don't know if these will do well for bass. I'll probably catch some smallmouth on this. But uh, what makes me happy about these is I will definitely catch walleye on these. So these will be great walleye plastics and something I can actually use through the ice. So that gets me excited because ice fishing is coming up pretty soon and all I fish through the ice for is mainly walleye. So anything I can get that I can use through the ice for walleye makes me happy. I like those. Of course the sticker, same one that I got in the other box. Uh, the Dibble Digest. The usual. That's the box. That is the Mystery Tackle Box Elite Bass Box for October. Uh, definitely a much better quality of box than my Pro Box. As I mentioned sort of at the start, uh, the Bass Box tends, or the uh, Elite Box tends to be better. And this is why, and it's little things like having a full package of plastics. Makes a, just such a big difference. Uh, I really like the unique Chase Baits um, iguana there. I can't wait to try that out. Getting a little interesting things like this hen clear plastic plane thing. It to me it's really weird looking, but I'll probably use it and have huge success. So I can't wait to actually try that out and and see. Sometimes. Simple is best. It's just like using a spoon. It's just a simple silver spoon with no paint or anything on it. A lot of times that's just the best thing to use. Um, yeah, everything I got here is pretty appropriate for the box. If I had largemouth bass around here, everything here would be good for that. Um, but since I don't, I kind of look at what can I use for pike, what can I use for smallmouth, what can I use for walleye, and I'll be able to make use of all of these. Um, and at some point I will get out for largemouth and all of these will be appropriate for that too. So. All in all, a pretty decent box. I'm pretty happy. I wish their quality of this box would transfer to the Pro Box on a more regular basis. But as far as this box goes, I'm really happy with it. I like this one. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of this box and how they compare to the Pro. Uh, and if you guys are getting the same. I know with the Elite box in particular, I get messages saying that the uh, person's box is much, much different than what I'm getting and showing on video. So I'm always curious to hear things like that. If you're getting something completely different, I really want to know about it. Uh, I find that really interesting and I like to sort of look into that and see what's going on there. Um, otherwise, just the usual feedback. Don't forget you can like and subscribe down there. It really helps me out for the channel. If you're not already, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash truenorthwilds, on Instagram at truenorthwilds, and our blog site truenorthwilds.com. As usual, thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you outside.